Um, people, even when it feels uncomfortable, or um, people who are who are oppressed, guys, and uh, a lot of the ideas that you might hear tonight kind of feel like stuff that adults could do, but what could you do? You don't have a lot of money, you can't drive yourself somewhere to volunteer necessarily, um, but one thing that you can do is um, act at school act certain ways at school. So that is one way. When you think about um, how could I do some of the things we're talking about tonight, because they may seem like, oh, they're in the Bible and you're supposed to be doing this and that, but it sounds so adult. But school is the perfect place for you to start doing that, doing things like that. So just something to think about. All right. So that brings us to the next affirmation. The last one of this semester. Affirmation six. Who wants to read it? Seeing mm -hmm. oh. as Jesus does with the outcast and and oppressed, the deep, the dead, uh, what? Dead, 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 and afflicted, seeking peace and justice with or without the support of others. <laughs> We've always thought about rewriting these in more junior high language, you know. <laughs> but nobody ever, uh, nobody ever really wanted to do that. I know. You guys do it for us. Yeah, the easy one. Come on, you guys talk like this all the time. So let's uh, let's get away from the particular words of that. But um, the idea is that. Jesus stands with those that are marginalized, outcast, oppressed, you know, all those words. Um, so basically the people who are needy, you know, the people that are ignored, the people that get overlooked, okay? So that's what we're talking about for uh, the, next, the next few weeks. So we're going to show you a video right now. And then just kind of... Notice what uh, what is maybe surprising to you, or uh, you know, kind of sticks out. Uh, and this video was made probably ten years ago. So uh, the stats the stats that are quoted may even be different now. You know, so. <laughs> seen this bumper sticker that's popular where I live. It says, God bless America. Every time I see one, I think, God has. God has blessed America. America is around 6% of the world's population, and we consume over 40% of its resources. The point isn't, how can God bless America more? The point is, how can America bless others? In the Bible, when God blesses somebody, when God gives to them, it's so that they'll bless and give to others. There's this verse in the Bible, a letter called 1 Timothy, and it says, command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant or to put their hope in wealth. Now, I always assumed this verse was for somebody else. I mean, specifically somebody rich, but, but I have a car. 
8% of the people in the world have a car. 92% of people in the world would see you and I driving in our cars. And, and I don't care what kind of car you have. 92% of the people in the world would see us driving in our cars and they think, Rich, do you have access to clean drinking water? Because somewhere around a billion people in the world don't even have clean water. And so you and I, like, we go to the sink, we take out a glass, we get something to drink. But hundreds of millions of people in the world would watch us doing that. And they'd probably say to themselves, man, it must be nice. Have you eaten today? Because somewhere around like 800 million people won't eat today. Like 300 million of them are kids. Like every couple seconds, somebody dies from hunger. Like how, like how much change do you have on you? Like your wallet or your purse? How much money do you have on you right now? Around a billion people in the world live on less than one dollar a day. Experts say that in order to provide like water, basic health and nutrition for everyone in the world, they say it, the estimates that it would cost somewhere around 20 billion dollars, which is how much Americans spend in one year on ice cream. We are so rich. But maybe you have the sense, like you look around and you have the sense like you don't have that much because you see people who have even more. But it's a dangerous thing when we start to think that our world is the world. I mean, we're like bombarded with all these images of the newest models and the latest styles. And after a while, our stuff, it starts to seem kind of average or outdated or not good enough. But, but for the rest of the world, our, our life is the commercial. Our stuff is the catalog. We're the picture in the advertisement. What, what isn't good enough for us, for the rest of the world, would be more than enough. So the verse in 1 Timothy, it says, Command those who are rich not to put their hope in wealth. And then, and then it goes on and it continues. And it says, But to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. That phrase, the God who richly provides us with everything. All that we have is a gift. Food, it's a gift. Clothes, gift. Roof, gift. That breath that you just took, it's a gift. Now there are some, there are some who say, no, 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 you don't understand. I've worked for what I have. I deserve it. It's mine. But like it says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, it says, you may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, because it's God who gives you the ability to produce wealth. So there's nothing wrong with wealth and possessions in themselves. I mean, God never condemns people simply for having things. I mean, they're, they're gifts from God. It's just that God made us for so much more than just enjoying our stuff. God gives for a reason. And so the verse, the command begins to those who are rich. It says, don't put your hope in wealth, put your hope in God. And then it continues and it commands, says, command them to do good to be rich in good deeds and to be generous and willing to share. Now when the writer uses the phrase good deeds, he's referring to this uh, ancient Hebrew concept called the mitzvot. But the word mitzvot is, is actually in Hebrew language, it's the word commands. So the ancient rabbis taught that when we do the commands of God, when we do good deeds, we're helping to repair and restore the world. So the first Christians, they picked up on this, like in a letter called Ephesians. That one of them wrote that we're saved by the grace of God through faith in Christ in order to do mitzvot, in order to do good deeds. We're, we're saved to do good works. And so we're commanded to do mitzvot and to be generous and willing to share. And then the verse wraps up this way. It says, in this way, and, and this way is the rich, that's us, becoming generous and willing to share. It says, in this way, they lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age. And in doing this, they take hold of the life 
that is truly life. Now, uh, when some hear the phrase laying up treasures, you know, they start to think of like money and wealth and, and mansions, but, but Jesus never even used the word mansion. I mean, nowhere in his teaching is, is it about or is the point getting more stuff. It's not the goal here on earth and it's not the goal someday in heaven. For Jesus, it's about being content. It's about taking hold of the life that is truly life. It's about realizing that the kinds of people we're becoming matters. It has eternal implications. It's about our future. It's, it's about our forever. Now, if you're like me at this point, you're kind of looking for the pitch, you know? Okay, just tell me where I'm supposed to give money or who I'm supposed to give money to, and then I'll give the money, and then I'll be off the hook. But this, this is about something much, much bigger than just giving to the latest cause. This isn't some transaction, you know, where we write a check, where we put some cash in an envelope, and then we're off the hook. This, this is about how we view the world and, and how we view our stuff. This is about what you and I truly believe about what we have. I mean, do I, do I really believe that everything I have is a gift and that I have, I have this divine responsibility to give, to share, to spread it around? Do I really believe that the way we're commanded to live is the best possible way to live? Let's be honest, it's easy to go to a church service and it's easy to read the Bible and it's easy to discuss who believes what and who's right and who's wrong. It's easy. But when Jesus talks about his followers, he talks about people who are generous, people who clothe the naked and take food to the hungry, take water to the thirsty, and people who visit the prisoner, and people who invite the stranger in, people who give their time, people who give their energy, people who give their money. Jesus said the way is narrow. He even said it's difficult for the rich to enter the way of God. Putting others first, that isn't so easy. Jesus said he came to serve and serving takes, serving takes sacrifice. It costs. It's hard to ask difficult questions about how we spend our money and what we spend our money on. I mean, you and I are told every day in a thousand ways that we need bigger, better, and more. And that what we have, it isn't good enough. You know, we're told buy this, consume that, get this, and then we'll be happy. Do you sometimes feel like you're on a treadmill and you're working harder and harder and harder and more and more and spending more and more and you're more and more stressed and less and less content? The best question isn't, what can I get? To take the way of Jesus seriously is to realize that the best question is, what can I give? Because all of us can give something here, now, today, and then tomorrow and then the next day. What can you do to be more generous? What is the next step for you? You have been blessed. What can you give? Who are you going to bless? So may you come to see that you're rich and that your possessions, they're luxuries that most of the people in the world don't have. And may you do what Jesus says. May you step in to your divine responsibility to give. And when you do, may you take hold of the life that is truly life.
stuff uh, that you notice in that. Yeah, Lydia. Okay, so he talked about like, you know, feeding the homeless and all that. But like a lot of people don't do that because they're like fakers, you know? Because the homeless are fakers? <laughs> no, like there are people who like fake being like homeless on the streets. There's like random people that you don't just want to like invite in your home because, you know, how do you know the people are on the streets are fakers? Well, one guy no. had an iPhone X and was exactly. like holding it. Exactly, like, you don't. So you can't tell money. if they're what? real or fake. This, this one guy had like an iPhone X and was like holding a sign that said "Give me money." And like, I was like, he was like saying that he was homeless. So if and he, he was, was like, really homeless, he wouldn't have an iPhone. No, and he literally well, he walked really into homeless. his house. Yeah, like, and then he just walked into his house. Like, if you're really homeless, would you really be spending your money on a phone? Or like an expensive phone. What would you spend your money on if you were homeless? Food, 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 Homeless shelter, or yeah. Anymore. But like, if they really want to change that, they can. But maybe they're just like damaged in some way that you don't know of. So you should like still believe them no matter what. Well, I, I feel attacked. I don't know. I was just saying that like only, like I. Was, never mind. I'm just, no, you're not being attacked. Like, there's been times, Nobody's attacking you. There's been times where someone is like found out who that person is and then found that they actually like have a really nice house and stuff and like there's been a there's been a lot of times where people have fake being homeless to get money so but there's also a lot of real homeless what people. you but guys are saying is that these people are making a pretty good living Standing in the media, all they actually do make are a lot of sign. Yeah, like you make a lot of Like that's a good job. Then like being like it's not a good a job. job. I'm not saying like all of them are fake. Yeah, I'm just saying there are like the occasional huh. fakes. Stella. Um. So if they are faking, like I said before, I read a book about someone who whose parents were poor. And when she grew up, she became like a billionaire and she gave a hotel to her mom who was already really poor again. But her mom didn't take the hotel, she decided to stay on the streets. So that kind of just shows that they are damaged and like in a way that you don't quite understand. But yes, they can get like lots of money just by sitting there and doing really nothing. Mm, I don't know. I yeah? So, like, my cousin was in Ohio. We were visiting him this one time. We were there for, like, two weeks. And, like, every day a different person would come out and hold the same sign and have, like, a backpack on the curb. Mm -hmm. It was, like, the same handwriting. It was, like, the exact same sign, but it was different people every day. And it was, like, on, um, on their backpack, it was, like, this organization that this, this guy hired people to make them money. Hmm. How much do you think somebody makes uh, begging on the street a day? I know that, well, not a day, but like in a year they make up to $30,000. <laughs> There's no way. There it is. No. They did a study thing. They make $37 Because a day. first of all, they don't have any taxes at all because you're just getting <laughs> money on the street. I feel like in New York, though, you make like And like, more. you, but like yeah. every five cars a stop give you money. <laughs> Then you make a lot of money, especially if you're. If you're I don't think every five cars area. gives you money. How many of you give money to those people? We have this thing in our car where it's, it's not <laughs> it's like just money. It's just like there's like these, these little bags in my car, which is like just like a little thing of deodorant, like a granola bar, like a little first aid kit thing. Really? Yeah, yeah my mom like puts some of those That's together. That's awesome! Wow. So you passed the. Instead of just giving them. So when you see somebody on the street, you give them a bag. Yeah. Yeah. And that's also probably better because there's a study. There's a study that like that 
like whenever they get money, they usually go and buy like either cigarettes or tobacco. They, they rarely ever use it because they can get food from a homeless shelter. But they're making thirty-eight thousand a year. <laughs> I'm just saying that was a study that they don't yeah. always spend it. Yeah, yeah, it was really like, like or uh, or they have a, a mental illness because there's not really great facilities for people with mental illness these days so a lot of times um, people become homeless because they have a mental illness so oh, that's interesting I think a piece of what you're talking about is um, an excuse. Yeah, Just a piece. Yeah. I'm, I'm not saying you're totally dead wrong, but I'm saying a piece of it is I to make you feel better. I did it. I said that other people might be motivated not to give people the money because yeah. of that reason. I never used well, yeah. my name. No, you're fine. So. You're fine. So, but I think sometimes that's what we do when we see somebody, uh, you know, that needs something or that we're not really comfortable helping them. Sometimes we kind of, uh, you know, put it in a different category. Well, yeah. Some people say, like, oh, that person that just, the person right in front of me just gave them some money, so I could just get away with not giving them anything. Mm-hmm. So what would be a what would be a place where you would give somebody money? You know, obviously we're not giving money to the people on the street. <laughs> um, maybe like a homeless shelter. Okay. Like a charity and donate it to a charity. Bella. You can pay people by doing jobs, like if. McDonald's, for instance. No, like, the like give somebody a job? Yeah, which is why um, instead of just kind of moping around most of the time on the streets, they could get a job because they are well aware of that situation that they could be in. Not everybody can get a job, but uh, some people, that probably applies to some people. But, you know, mental illness is another thing that prevents people from getting jobs. Yes? Okay, so mine's kind of a two-part. So are we just talking about people like they're homeless or are we talking about like people that need money uh it's your it's your guys conversation because okay. for the first one i was going to say that like the table race we went to that mm -hmm. kind of oh, yeah. they would like give people like work and then they also give them a meal so i thought like that would be it. if like going there and supporting like by eating there would kind of help like, yeah. money. And then also if it's like Do you guys know that organization, Table Grace? Uh, it was delicious. If you need food, you can work there uh, for a little bit to earn some money for food. And then and it's all they don't have prices, it's all donation. And then like for people that need money, they're like it's not just like begging you could like I know because like I'm just connected to cancer with it. If you have an illness and like you are so sick that you but you can't afford your medical bills and you just like need help. Yeah, just go on the street and ask and stuff. No? Okay. Because well I thought it was like a run, like I always see people doing like runs. Oh yeah. Like uh awareness. Like we do thing at West Side at the game. We do? Yeah. We do? Why do you think we have a pink out? That's for awareness. Like that's not awareness, but that's not raising money. So what about the concept like that our country is six percent of the world's population, and um, we consume forty percent of the resources? Wait, what? Our country is six percent of the population, and we consume forty percent of the world's resources. But then, but we manufacture a lot of goods and send them out, right? We also have a lot of proportion distortion. <laughs> yeah, proportion <laughs> distortion. What did you think of the idea that, and the, it's not a billion anymore, it's 660 million people, uh, people that don't have access to clean drinking water. Wait, so that's good. Going down. That's good? It's going Wait, down. Oh, it's going down, yeah. yeah. People are working on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so it's good. And that, there's this one thing to think about.
in engineering, you can't just like, what? If yeah. you're thirsty, then you can't just like, get water. Or you can't just, you, like, if you're really thirsty in the middle of the day, you can be like, oh, can I get a drink? And you'll be like, oh, I'm so thirsty, I'm like, starving, I'm, like, but you don't really know what that feels like. Or like, and where is everyone? There's if like you're, if half you're, the people here tonight. Like, if you you're like, well, halfway well, through the happens. morning, and <laughs> you're not here. <laughs> she goes, you called it fat? <laughs> So, um, what's kind of our takeaway from this concept, you know, because you don't, you know, you can't go around just uh, feeling guilty all the time, feeling bad, like, uh, you know, when, when you uh, say you don't like this food for dinner and your mom says, People in China would kill to China or something like that. Rice. And uh, there's people starving in Africa, <laughs> and, and you're My being picky about it. Well, mom, why did you put the food in the box? Anyways, um, but what's the what's the larger concept here? You know. Be thankful for what you have. <laughs> Thanks. It's, 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 it's a little more than that. I think that's good, but I think it's also a little more than just being thankful that you have so much. Story oh, stop eating ice cream. Yes. It's <laughs> donate. <laughs> donate. It's, it's all ice cream. Um, be thankful for what you have. Like, share so your ice cream. <laughs> share. Hey guys, quiet down a little bit. Yeah? Maybe don't take for granted what you're given. How do you do that though? What do you mean? Which How do you not take it for granted? Give it back. Maybe. Like, not always want to pay it for me. Yeah. Know yeah, your, like, yeah. your limits and, like, don't, don't be greedy. Take, yeah, don't take like Instead of buying ice cream, be like, don't Well, it's going to melt. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna melt. <laughs> it's gonna uh, I think there's a, there's a little more. I mean, I think that's close. You don't take things for granted. There's a, it's possible that there's a responsibility. That if you have more than you need, then um, maybe you have a responsibility to those who have less than they need. You know? So, how many of you, uh, like what percentage of uh, the money that you get, either from your parents or, you know, from your allowance or whatever, do you give away to somebody? I would give, say, spend. Like, so what do you do? Spend. Alright, what? What's give, save, spend? It's where, well, I don't really do it anymore. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just kind of got out of habit. Okay, <laughs> I like, I, I have like these little things. I have like, I put a majority in the save, and then I put like some of the spend, and then I Wait, okay, yeah, and I give some to put some to give, and then I used to like bring the gift to church and then put it in the basket. Oh, okay. So you give and then you spend <laughs> and you save. I used to give, one. Save. Okay. Give, save, Wait, spend. was the thing with the gift send its bag? Was it like a blue uh, piggy bank thing? No. Oh, I can. My grandma gave me one of those. It's like a. Blue piggy bank I have that has like one. three compartments. Oh no. <laughs> and one of them is shaped like a store. One was okay, like a thanks. One thanks, Weston. Thanks. thanks. <laughs> so, uh, give, give, save, spend. Yeah. And then you had a, so you had a certain amount you were going to give away to the well, church. Yeah, it, um, I, I don't remember. It was like, it wasn't a lot, but I knew like if I did put in a lot, like every time. Because I didn't want to put in like half of them now, and I wasn't gonna like split out evenly. Cause like, like I probably like earned it, and I'm not saying like that if you earn it that you don't deserve to give it away. What um? I why did you stop? Well, I just kind of got out of habit of it, and no. I didn't really. I just have like I just do it like now. It's like I didn't have to put it in the actual container, so I just. Yeah. Cause like give me it to your friends. <laughs> Uh, sometimes, but most of the time, that's not what this conversation is about. Your friends probably aren't for it. 
So, bye. So, you know, the general concept is uh, that you have a responsibility. Maybe if you have more than you need, hey, can you guys stop? Yeah. Thanks. Then there's a responsibility um, to to give. I don't know, like uh, the whole distribution of wealth. You know, it's it's kind of unfair that some people have a lot of money, maybe not even on purpose, and some people really don't. You know, how do we balance that in our culture? There's such a massive difference between the very poor and the very rich, right? Yeah. Where are we? Where, where are you on that scale? Medium, where do you think you guys are on that scale? Like, really high. You're really high. Really You're really high. You're really high. And, uh, you know, compared to the world, you're very high on the wealth scale. So I think that comes with a responsibility um, to help out other people. So I'm not going to say anything about, you know, Starbucks or anything like that, but, uh, but you know, no. there's times where it's like, you have, you have uh, even though you guys don't even have jobs, you got money, and uh, it's kind of like when you get the money, you think, well, I deserve this, and I'm going to spend it on this, because I want to. Like, that concept uh, is not there for many people in the world. When, if they got money, they're like, I have to spend it here. I can't just be like, oh, what do I want to do? <laughs> what do I want to get? What do I want to eat? A lot of people in the world are like, if they get money, this is going to something that is for survival. You know? So I think it's a good thing to keep in mind you know, as you're making those decisions with uh, how you're going to you know, give, give, save, spend, and stuff like that. And to just be aware, be more aware. I can't imagine that all those people standing on the street begging for money, which is not a pleasant job. You get yelled at, people um, say terrible things to you. I, I actually interviewed some people uh, with a video camera, I could show it to you. And it was like three or four people, and um, they were not happy to be out there. <laughs> They're, it's miserable. People steal your stuff, you know, it's cold, it's wet, and most people just drive by or make a gesture out the window or say get a job, you know, something like that. Um, so I can't imagine that's a profitable business, but there probably is some kind of small percentage of people that are doing something, but why? If you had a choice of job, would you really stand on the street and just ask, you know, how much is somebody going to give you a dollar? How many cars are going to give you a dollar? Yeah. <laughs> is it worth it? So maybe before you say, oh, I'm just not even going to think about that person. So here's a, we're going to look at a few Bible passages. And uh, I'll show you how to. Has anybody ever looked up a Bible passage? Well, I have. Have you? Well, I'd like to go to uh, BibleGateway.com. BibleGateway.com. Hey, why is it? She wrote to us last. And, uh, Lydia. Lydia. I'm not doing anything. I'm sitting here being quiet. I'm not Shit. Sorry. All right. So up here is uh, this is the translation. So our church uses the NRSV, which is the New Revised Standard Version, and there's about a million different translations you can use. <laughs> So, <laughs> oh, the most junior high friendly version is probably the NLT. The New Living Translation. In fact, we'll just use that one. All right. So, first John. What? 
Wanna do? Six what? Somebody wanna read that? Yes. Go ahead, Weston. Uh, if someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, how can God's love be be in that person? Now that's uh, that's pretty tough. Have you ever seen somebody in need? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever not done anything about it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> what? Sounds like it. So. I think uh, this is like an extreme uh, example, but but at the same time, sometimes um, I think things come in your way where you see somebody in need for a reason because you're the person that could help them. You know, um, do you ever like walk by somebody that maybe they dropped all their notebook and stuff like that, or sort of somebody's getting picked on, and you think to yourself, I could do something here. But then you don't do it. Does that ever happen to anybody? Someone trips someone in just to say that you can help them back up. Obviously, yeah. not. I haven't done that. Someone may have a quote that I said that. All right. I haven't done that. I tripped people just so I can help them. I tripped people just so I can help them. You should be a good person. Who wants to read that one? And all the people. A little louder. Oh, are you Wait, which one? 44 or 45? Both of them? I'm going to read both of them. Okay. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. So that's how the early church lived. Uh, that's the first church in Acts. Um, and that's how they, they organized themselves. They, they pulled all their money, they, they went to work, and then they brought all their money, and uh, they shared it. And then the, the organizers of that gave to each person as they had need. So people sold their property, they sold their possessions, their houses, and they just basically gave all the money to the, to the community. And then the community provided for everyone. What do you think about that kind of system? Interesting. Interesting. I mean, like that's that not the system like a, we live in. That sounds like a dictatorship. It's not a dictatorship. It's it's more of a socialistic thing. Yeah, it's like the Communism, maybe. But, you know, good community. So, one of the problems in that kind of organization is that somebody usually corrupts it. <laughs> but... It would be nice to be able to, to share like that, right? Um, yeah. So I have a question about like when what if I think there'd be a problem with like the people that receiving the stuff, they have like different things they needed and then the people giving them would give them. So and I, I think that's a reflection of our our system, you know, we we see people that are in need and we think they're taking advantage of the system or and then some people do take advantage of the system and some people who have a lot corrupt the system and make it tougher for the poor people so i think when you're talking about these problems it's it's because that's the kind of system that we're kind of brought up in you know when we think about uh people on welfare or food stamps and and it comes to mind like, oh, they're just uh, manipulating the system to get some help, you know. Which is, uh, I'm sure some people do, <laughs> you know. But maybe they need more also at the same time. Some people do, and a lot of people don't. Yeah, I think the majority probably don't. Uh, oh, I don't know. Nope. I don't like that old shooting good thing. <laughs> All right, who wants to read this one? Go ahead. What's the end again? Yeah. All right. This is what the Lord says. The people of Israel have sinned again and again, and I will not let them go and punish. They sell honorable people for silver and poor people for a pair of sandals. 
They trample helpless people in the dust and shove the oppressed out of the way. Both farmer, father, and not father and sons sleep with the same woman, corrupting my holy name. Okay. Oh, uh, just ignore that last line there. <laughs> That's not what we're talking about. <laughs> so, uh, Amos was a prophet uh, back in, um, before, you know, like basically uh, maybe four or five thousand years ago. He, and um, and that's what was going on back then. So this isn't a new thing with our society. But what prophets would do is they would they would um, try to correct the system, the government, the leaders. Sometimes they had like visions of future, but mostly they were like uh, people that would try to correct uh, people that were going astray. And so. Amos is like telling Israel, you're in trouble because you're letting all these things happen. And eventually, you know, Israel got defeated by the Babylonians. But selling people for silver, poor people for a pair of sandals, I mean, that was a long time ago too, and we're still doing it. So, all right, so I think the last question is, what's one thing you can do? And don't just think about it like, um, you know, I'm going to go work at the community covered one, one time this year. Like, really think about it. What can you do for people that are poor, marginalized, forgotten, made fun of? You know, don't just think about money. Think about, like, uh, like you know, friends and, uh, you know, what do you call that? That, that relational capital, you know? Think about people who have terrible relational capital. And what could you do for them? So I know a lot of you guys don't have money uh, on a regular basis. So maybe you need to be creative with how you can uh, make a difference in somebody's life like that. To be responsible with what you have by maybe giving some of it to somebody that needs it. All right, any questions? Any thoughts on that? Brayden, you had your hand up for a second there? Uh, sure. You're just pulling it over. All right. See ya.